a very warm welcome to Christian sir and Hashwinder sir. So let me just introduce you to our panelists for today. Mr. Christian sir is a biotech entrepreneur, business angel, and managing director at the Biomed X Institute in Heidelberg, Germany. He studied molecular biology and received his doctoral degree from the University of Heidelberg. Throughout his entire professional life, his focus has always been to foster innovation at the interface between academia and industry. We welcome you on the show, sir. And another major thing, he got a Tesla. <laughs> that is one of his another achievement. <laughs> Thank you. Talking much. about Hashwinder Singh, sir. Now he is the managing director. is a master's in computer applications and as an MBA has a total of 22 plus years experience, including software development and implementation and data processing in Punjab, Tractors Limited, and Drish Shoes Limited. He has been involved in designing local area network system designing and implementing various business applications. Currently, he heads the overall operations of the company with a focus on business development. I again welcome you both on the session and the podium is all yours now. Thank, Thank you, Akko. As you rightly said, uh, we were discussing about uh, the, the brand new Tesla that he's got with the red color. So... Uh, if he was here, he would have definitely painted our town red. <laughs> <laughs> but going from red to med, you know, uh, he heads and he's founded Biomed uh, X Institute. In India, when we talk of institute, it's a standard process. You know, you get in through an entrance, there's a standard curriculum. You look for a job or if you are... Uh, differently made, you look for some entrepreneurship or whatever. But knowing you and knowing your work, I know Biomedex is, is superbly different. I won't say totally different. Why I chose the word superbly because I would really like you to tell us for a few minutes, what is Biomedex? Thank you so much, dear, dear Hashmir. Um, so uh, biomedics, to put it in simple words, uh, is at the interface between academic uh, academia and industry, and we're combining the best of the two worlds. So we're trying to capture uh, outstanding young uh, academic research talents from around the world uh, who are very creative, uh, who have lots of ideas, but um, who do not really know how to translate this knowledge into something that in the end will be a new medicine and help patients. And this is what we combine uh, at Biomedex with industry know-how, where uh, these young fellows learn how to, uh, how to really develop new medicines, new therapeutic concepts, how to validate them properly in a way uh, that in the end they will enter the clinic and then help uh, patients. So we're combining these two worlds. And it's also an institute which is very much focused on uh, developing young talent. Uh, so normally when we start a new project, we post a very challenging problem uh, of the pharmaceutical industry, a research problem worldwide at the best universities and research institutions, and invite young academic uh, scientists to apply by submitting a very original project proposal online, how to, how to solve the problem. And uh, usually we get between 200 and 600 proposals, lots of them actually from, from Indians. And, uh, and then we select the 15 best ones and fly them in for a five-day boot camp in Heidelberg, where I'm based. So it's... Uh, for the people online, it's not Hyderabad. I always, uh, I'm always asked Heidelberg. Oh, nice, you're, you're from India. It's not Hyderabad. It's Heidelberg in Germany, and uh, and actually, and then uh, we have in Heidelberg we have this boot camp where we don't let them sleep for four nights. They see each other for the first time, and we help them to convert this collection of crazy ideas into something we would call a truly outstanding research project proposal. And then the winner gets a, a research grant uh, of, on average, uh, $1 million per year for up to five years. And then we relocate these talents with their families to Heidelberg, where they then spent uh, uh, up to five years in my institute on the campus of, of one of the major universities in Germany. So when you source such talent from worldwide, I mean, uh, in the last one year, uh, I'm sure your uh, capacity is 100% full, but is it physical or are you kind of how do they merge together, you know? Very good, very good question, Harshwin. So, so as for all of us, uh, this pandemic <clears throat> has put a lot of uh, problems on our shoulders as entrepreneurs. And especially in an, <clears throat> in an institute like Biomedics, where we focus on innovation, and innovation is something which only happens when people sit together physically, right? They, uh, they, they discuss ideas over, over lunch, over dinner, at the bar, uh, doing social, uh, social activities. 
And of course, this is very challenging in, uh, in times of the coronavirus. <clears throat> So um, the way we manage, I, my, my, my background, as, as, as you've heard in the beginning, my background is virology. So I saw this coming more or less already in, uh, in February last year. You can go back to one of my tweets. And actually, when this just escaped from Wuhan, I tweeted that this will be the biggest challenge for humanity, uh, which we've ever, ever experienced. And, and this is actually what, what happened later on, very sadly. And so we started moving our, uh, our uh, laboratory instruments already in March in a way that only fewer people are in the same room at the same time. We introduced shift work. Uh, everybody needs to wear masks since last February, March. Uh, we're testing people uh, multiple times a week. Uh, and, and as a result, we didn't really uh, have to shut down our laboratory activities for a single day, even during lockdowns. <clears throat> and what, what's of course challenging is these boot camps, because in these boot camps, we generate new ideas and people are flying in from all around the world. And, uh, and we were a little reluctant with boot camps last year, but we need to continue our business. So just last week, we had the first boot camp during the pandemic. Uh, we're still in a lockdown in Germany. So uh, uh, only very essential business travel is possible. <clears throat> and we've really managed to fly in. I'm very proud of this. Uh, my team has flown in 13 of the five, 15 participants from all parts of the world. People from India, from Pakistan, from the United States, I mean, coming from everywhere. <clears throat> it was a lot of effort with all these embassies to get the visa, then to get the special permits, to get them tested, uh, to get them on site and make sure they get tested when they return and daily tests on site, special permit for the hotel where we did the events, uh, the police knew about it. So it was very uh, complicated, but it worked, it worked. So, and, and there was only two people who took part from remote. And so we put cameras everywhere so that they felt like they were part of the group. Um, and, and it worked. It, this hybrid format worked very well, actually. I didn't expect that. Actually, <laughs> I purposefully asked this question because to come to the first question related to the topic for today, that in this kind of uh, digital world, or like you said, hybrid world, then how do you currently or how do you plan to train mentees or they are your aspiring entrepreneurs as well. So, so what is your uh, take on that? Very, very difficult. <clears throat> the, you know, I, I've been with, with Thai now for, uh, for over a decade. I joined Thai in two, 2020, uh, 2010. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I, I, I joined Thai because of, because of the central theme that we as successful entrepreneurs want to give back to the aspiring entrepreneurs and build personal relationships with mentees and help them to start their companies, not with the primary interest to make money, but with the primary interest to help these young people to, suc uh, to succeed. And, uh, and this, of course, building these trustful relationships has become extremely difficult uh, during this digital age, right? Uh, the two of us, we, we've been together in, in Chandigarh and in Heidelberg, and we know each other very well. So it's a very personal, trustful relationship. Yeah. But these young guys uh, who are now just starting their career or starting their company and didn't have this chance of getting these personal interactions, uh, they need to build these networks of trust over video conferences, which I think is extremely difficult. And, uh, and of course, with my mentees, we have switched completely to, uh, to a video conference but, um, but I don't think the quality uh, of mentorship can be the same over, uh, over video conference. And uh, I, I truly hope that uh, we will find ways to, uh, to get back to a new normal where personal interactions are, are happening again. Because otherwise, also my kids, you know, they're, they're now starting to study at university, sit, sitting basically in front of a screen while we at the time were drinking with people, right? And, and having fun and having social interactions. And these networks usually last a lifetime. A, a, a network you build over video conference, I cannot imagine how this, how this gets to the same type of quality we have, for example. True. Uh, you know, you talked of personal relationships. We, we started out when you were here in Chandigarh, um, you had a lovely uh, section and interaction with the audience uh, at that time, all Thai audience. I know we drove down or up to Timber Trail and likewise, when I was there in Hanover and Frankfurt, uh, and I've been to Hanover for a few years already when I, when I came and met you in Frankfurt, not knowing that there is such a colorful city like Heidelberg in, in Germany. You won't believe me. There must be about 100 people at least who've gone to Germany and I've told them to go to Heidelberg. 
it's a it's a fantastic place um, but when you talk of personal relationships now we come to the point you know and you said there is a lot of value so value of personal relationships versus value of virtual meetings you know is there the same passion the same excitement the same memories the same link i don't know you know in the last one year i mean i have made notes over virtual meetings but uh, those notes are purely business purely work oriented i can't relate to them i relate a person to them i so what is you are into the thick of it you know not only for your uh, students i would say or or mentees but you are member of so many associations you have been past president of uh, tie brussels a uh, number of health and pharma and uh, biological associations i mean you built hundreds of relationships i would say you know so so how do you value personal interactions versus you know virtual interactions or virtual virtual relationships it's a very very difficult question hasrin so so um my personal opinion is that uh there is a lot of value in the in the digital conversation as well right uh one of them being that without having to jump on a plane you can you can be with thousands of people uh, at a big event very quickly you don't have the travel expenses you don't have the hassle the time you lose during travel if you call it losing time i personally i you know i love traveling so for me it's not a lost time but uh, for many people this in and out is very annoying and of course uh, this means we can reach many more people uh, with our messages uh, but it's not as personal as an individual meeting so this means i think especially within tie and and network organizations where you have this mentor mentee relationship uh, i think we need to work very hard to find um, a hybrid format where we make use of these advantages of digital uh, conversations but where we put even more effort in overcoming the the hurdles to have personal meetings like we did during the boot camp um, uh, last week at biomedics the effort to do such a hybrid boot camp and flying in people during a pandemic is about three times as much as the normal effort but it was worth every minute and every dollar to 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 invest and uh, and this is something we should we should think about that we reallocate our resources and the money we actually save because of uh, synergies uh, and uh, synergistic effects of the virtual platforms that we use this money and invest more into enabling uh, personal relationships by really making sure the important events where you need personal relationships to take the effort and fly someone in with all the hassle of testing of masks whatever you need to make sure that you can sit over dinner and discuss because otherwise there's no way of building a solid uh, a solid uh, trustful relationship that's my opinion um Christian I know when we met first time you were uh, heading a different kind of organization pretty much doing something same called bio rn right mm-hmm. so how right. is biomedics different from bio rn ah that's a that's a very good question so uh, at bio rn um i was the the, the basis for bio rn was that uh, we won a very big national grant of the german federal uh, ministry for education and research So this ministry tried to identify the five strongest high-tech regions in Germany that could be developed to the next level to the European League or to the World League let's put it that way so putting putting the the main innovation hubs of Germany on the global map of the top talents that was the idea and there was quite a substantial grant so we won a 40 million euro grant from the German government plus another 40 million from local industry partners and so i managed this uh, 80 million euros euros uh, public private research and development fund and the goal was to bring together academia and industry as a regional development effort so it was a government uh, like organization that tried to create collaboration create jobs attract top talents these kinds of things in biomedics is a little different because this previous company i didn't own i run i i run it basically for the local association with which was all local players of of our uh, local community Uh, Biomex is is my first company I started where there's no uh, external investor so I'm the owner there's no venture capital no public money uh, and this is uh, you know I for me this is something I've I've worked a lot over two decades with venture capital funded startups and uh, um you know um I I decided for myself I'm too old to deal with venture capitalists and I want to make my own decisions 
So, and uh, this is why I started Biomedics the way I started. But the general concept is the same. We attract top talent from around the world. We move them with their families to Heidelberg and then they live and work in my institute. And if they're very successful, they get to the next career step and we grow a global family of outstanding researchers. So, so far we have signed 260 employment agreements. So it's very high turnover, lots of talents now sitting in positions in pharma companies and also in academia uh, that went through our institute. Fantastic. You know, uh, so, so, many, so many years for BioRN and for last five or six years in biomedics, you know, yes. so, so people know you and you know where exactly to tap the right uh, people, especially for your mentees in your institute. Uh, but, you know, for, for us sitting in India, especially the startups uh, who started maybe a year or two earlier, what do they do? You know, even before they have started, how do you how do you suggest to them? How do they go out in the virtual world? How do they build networks? You know, you've been in Thai. Uh, I know Ashok has been one of your mentors. Yes, and there are still, so many still people. Is, still is, still is. Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> still very close contact, and I'm missing missing him and his wife Sheila. I'm missing so much because I couldn't visit them for a year now. Usually yeah. I was there three, four times at his house and he was at my house a couple of times a year. And this, you know, this has all stopped. We are now doing wine taste, virtual wine tasting over the screen, right? So, <laughs> because there's no other, no other choice. Yes. But please, I, sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, no. So, you know, so that is that strong personal relationship you be- built because that was physical contact. Yes. Now here, what do you suggest to the startups or to, to young companies who, you know, Uh, In India, it's always uh, tea diplomacy or wine or whiskey or dinner. So people haven't known anything else. So in digital world, you know, what do you, what are the top two tips you, you say you should do and what is one thing you shouldn't do in the digital world? Can you, can you suggest that? Very good point. So, so number one for a, a young aspiring entrepreneur is find mentors. Mentors who have done this before successfully and who can uh, avoid that you make all the same mistakes all over again, right? So this is, um, uh, it's, it's good to learn from your mistakes, but it's even better to learn from other people's mistakes. So, and that's why young people need mentors. And also from an economic perspective, you know, my, my first startup, I didn't have a mentor. Uh, and and uh, I ran again, I hit a wall after two years and, and um, I learned a lot. But this cost uh, a, a loss of two and a half million of venture capital, which was basically wasted. If someone would have told me before, I would have basically maybe learned the same thing, but with a little less uh, waste of money. So it's very important to have this mentorship. And I think in this digital age, um, many, I'm, I'm seeing many young people who think uh, they can build networks uh, the same way digitally with more people. Uh, I don't think so. I think you need to, as a young person, you need to invest a lot more into getting into physical contact with suitable mentors that can help you and then sit together and drink with them and eat with them and learn from them. And this means that you need to approach them properly. And if you look at platforms like LinkedIn, uh, where we all connected more or less, or at networks like, like Thai, uh, it's, it's, you know, it, uh, there's never a situation, I, at least I have not seen a situation within Thai where a young entrepreneur after a conference, for example, um, uh, wrote an email to a, to a very successful entrepreneur who is a charter member of Thai and, and asking a question whether they could have a short conversation and get feedback about their business plan. And then the senior entrepreneur saying, no, I'm not going to talk to you. Right. It's not happening. Right. And this is why, why these young people need to be a little more, uh, have a little more tenacity and, and think about how with the very personal, nicely drafted letter, over LinkedIn or over email, they can convince a senior entrepreneur they would like to talk to and learn from to have a 15 or, or a minute or 30 minute conversation about their business idea. And then if there is chemistry, you know, maybe there is a, a, a mutual relationship that builds and the next step, of course, is a personal meeting that uh, the mentee either flies to the, to the mentor or if this is too expensive, uh, you 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 uh, you decide at which conference you're going to meet because you're there anyway. Yeah. And 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 we need to make sure that we have these these physical interactions. I would really avoid. You said one thing. I would I would I would say you should avoid is at the moment you need to keep in mind that 
many, especially of the senior people uh, with very short attention span, and most of them are these successful entrepreneurs and venture capitalists, uh, they are getting the, the, I call it Zoom fatigue, very, very, very uh, quicker than the young people. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also getting old now and, and uh, I personally, I don't, I, I cannot participate in, in five conferences, virtual conferences per day. So something like this, which, you know, is very close to my heart. I do this once a quarter, maybe, or once a half year, but uh, I'm not accepting all the invites every day. I'm getting to be at a virtual big event. And this is why it's very dangerous for these young people to think that, the more of these virtual events you visit, uh, the more knowledge you will get and the bigger your network will be. So I think people should need to be very much more selective and keep in mind that the good people uh, or successful people get this Zoom fatigue and will probably not be present at such a meeting. So you need to find other ways how to approach them, right? Yeah. Uh, one, you know, question. Uh, I've been visiting Europe for the last 14 years. But, you know, traditionally, because of the choice or lack of choice of language, um, anybody who's starting out for overseas market, it's always North America, UK or Australia. Yep. Uh, so, so what is your tip? What to do if you have to enter Europe? Is learning a new language like German, Italian, French or Dutch um, is, is mandatory? Or oh. Yeah. So what is it's it, not- you know? Yeah. Uh, any any one single suggestion which will make you click in Europe? Well, let, 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 me, let me put it that way. Um, every talent, every company, every customer uh, can today freely choose where he or she wants to live, pursue a career, uh, purchase goods or collaborate in the world. It's, it's a free world. Everyone, I mean, talent is distributed evenly, but interestingly, Opportunity is not. And in order to, um, and, and what happens is that talents, customers, investors tend to go towards the physical locations on the map where they can, uh, where they have most opportunities. And this is why Silicon Valley is so successful. Uh, and other places also, you know, like Boston, also in Europe, there's a couple of places. And this means these places are already adapting very fast, especially when it comes to language and welcoming people from other cultures. And there is this, it's not distributed evenly. So people don't come to Germany or they come to, or they come to France or they come to UK, they come to a city, right? A, a particular city. And then you should go to the city when you, want to, when you want to expand your business, go to the city where you don't have to learn the local language. And there is some of those. Heidelberg, for example, is very international. You can speak English at the restaurant, in the shop. Uh, There's international schools for children teaching in English. And there will be the cities that can adapt. They will attract all the customers, the talent and the VC in the world. And there will be the cities that cannot adapt and they will lose, right? Because if you're not on the top 10 list of the top uh, talents of this world, where they want to pursue a career uh, in the future, you will lose because everybody is free to choose. And, and, And this is my personal view of the world. So there's going to be a free flow of talent and, 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 and uh, outstanding companies and investors, and they're looking for the right spot. So if you want to expand to Europe, look for the places that are welcoming, that are welcoming you and that don't demand you to learn the language. Okay, great. That's very, very important. I, uh, you know, besides, of course, congratulating you for your birthday gift that you bought for yourself, which was a brand new Tesla, I need to congratulate you for uh, the award. You know, you've been uh, selected as the biotechnology CEO of the year 2020 Europe. You know, it's for many, it may be just a line. I know it's past 20 years of sweat and blood that goes into this award. Can you tell us something about this and how you got selected? Well, how, what the process, this is Business Worldwide magazine, how the process was, I, I don't know, but uh, what is necessary in order to get approached is two things. First of all, you need to get old. Okay, check. And second, <laughs> and second is uh, you need to get some sort of visibility in a certain field. And in this case, it was being a CEO, an entrepreneur. And, uh, and this, is, this is for every one of us, you know, sooner or later when you, when you have one or two successes, you become visible, then people will approach you with uh, prizes. It's also 
for them. It's uh, for marketing purposes. So this is also supporting their magazine. And I had a very nice interview in, in, um, at the London Stock Exchange. It was very nicely done when they handed over the prize and made videos. So this was quite, uh, quite nice. But, you know, prizes is one thing, but uh, I'm, I, my focus is creating impact, uh, impact for society. And I rather measure uh, the number of, of lives I could positively impact uh, during my work. And I've developed a concept is called impact level, where everyone can measure where you are in this hierarchy. So it's a very simple concept. So if you have changed in your life, if you have positively impacted the life of 10 people, 10 to the power of one, then you impact level one. When you have impacted 100 people's lives positively, 10 to the power of two, then you are impact level two. Three would be thousand of people. And then six impact level six would be a million people. And impact level nine is what we all want, is, is humanity, right? You want to imp uh, positive impact humanity. So in that level, you can basically uh, always challenge yourself, which impact level are you, and then figure out how do you get to the next level, right? And that's, that's also what drives me personally. Christian, uh, you know, we are a little out of time now, but uh, I must say that as always, whenever I have interacted with you, I do take home a couple of new points which remain with me. And, and I, again, we look forward to uh, meeting you personally. Once yes. things open up, I think we are going to have you again with Chai Chandigarh yes. and sure. uh, have greater interactions with startups, with established companies here, with, you know, just spend time with us and uh, enable us to have a greater impact. Thank you so much, Harshvir. Thank you for having me and uh, wishing you a good, uh, good uh, new day for this uh, wonderful conference. It was a pleasure being part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye and look forward to seeing you.